All right, Shalom. This is Hara One Banyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp, located right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Before I begin, I want to say Ka Halayim, La Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Ha Kodash, Ma Ma. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Agwati, my children, that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. This is going to be a, um expose. I, you know, I want to do a response and edification for those um, that are wise. But a uh, response to this guy, um, Lashawan Tahar. <laughs> He's doing a play on words, man. I see what you did there. You know, I see what you did. But. This guy doing a play on words, man. Slick. Slick. He never show his face. I, I looked through all his videos. I ain't see one video with his face on there. Now we know why. Because he don't want to show his damn hair. <laughs> he got that long hair. Don't care. You know. Um, We know Lashawan Tahar means. Of course, we know Elder Apostle Tahar. But the word Tahar means pure. So pure tongue. I get what he's saying. But. You're being slick, you know. But anyway, um, I listened to it. He's saying a lot. He's like a lot, man. This, uh, he's you know, um, he was going in on um, what's that? He said a few things. I think he said something about smoking weed. Then he's talked about long hair. You know, we know there's no law against um, uh herbals mar marijuana but the thing is um that dude sound high man <laughs> he's a <sound> high as shit <laughs> he's a high when i was listening to him and then you can wear your hair long <laughs> yeah listen to it man this dude's is, is different but um i was listening and i'm gonna play the play a, a part of the video i may not be able to get through all of it because i gotta get started something else in a minute but I know he went into the Greeks, the time of the Greeks, with the Lacedaemonians, which is later in the video, so I'm going to do that later. And then he went into the time with Paul, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, all right? And that happened, uh, was that 52 AD? And uh, he just don't understand Paul's true message and, and why he was teaching those people in Corinth uh, about having long hair or not. You know, should a woman be covered, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to play a clip of his video, you know, fair use. And then we'll go from there, all right? Of course, we don't have no, no, no face of the person, but it's just his videos up. Abraham and Sarah thing. Couldn't get with it. You know, yeah. and this is a fact. You ain't on with that one, bro. Yes, she is my sister, which would make her. All right, there we go. We won number three. He got him. He got him in. Uh, he got him categorized. He got number one issue, number two issue, number three. <laughs> so we're gonna deal with number three. Third reason is the long hair issue. Now. To this day, I still don't have a bias towards this, although I have longer hair. All right, I have locks. It's the long hair issue. Now, to this day, I still don't have a bias towards this, although I have... <laughs> I don't have a bias, but I do have locks, you know what I'm saying? It's like... <laughs> Go ahead, man. I have longer hair. All right, I have locks. I had an issue with this back when I had a mini fro, and I was just getting braids, and you know? So this, this isn't man. coming from a place of, oh, I want to keep a certain hairstyle, so let me make up a... It's not funny that he's... Um, the Lord putting out his candle, but it is... The statements are, like, ridiculous, man, so it's humorous. You know, doctrine or something. You know, 
And before I even bring out this information, you can read it on the screen right here. And you can find out that in the Greek culture, mm -hmm. which, where was Corinth? A municipality in Greece. Who did Paul write to and say this? He said it to the Corinthians. All right. You can see it right there. It's, it's connected with idolatry. But let me just, let me just go to the, um, real quick, like, and just read it. Because I do want to bring out scripture. First Corinthians 11 and 14 says, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Boom. He should stop right there. He should stop right there. All right. He said, even nature itself. Let's get that real quick. All right, you know what? Let's let him finish. And then I'll go back and do an edification on this point. And I might just make that the video and chop this damn bullshit up. <clears throat> but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her for her hair is given her for a covering. Now don't forget that point. I'm going to run it back. But if any man... He's doing his, uh, this, his <laughs> look, if I, uh, I'm going to do a, I'm going to go back, but just don't forget that point. Doesn't nature itself teach you? All right. That's the point, man, that he's missing. Seem to be contentious. We have no such. Let's run it back. It is a glory to her for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom. Neither the churches of God. He didn't say this is a law. All right. He didn't say this is a commandment. Just like the uh, wicked scribes and Pharisees was getting on certain Israelites for not washing their hands. Now, today, if you. There's All right. He about to go into a whole rant. Right, let's, let's deal with the scripture real quick. Let me put this damn headphone in. <laughs> All right, so he's trying to compare this statement that Paul was making uh, about the customs of our people, which goes into the ordinances, the culture of our nation, right? Which is very important. It goes into emulation. Now, this is the thing. So he all over the place. I'm going to deal with this one point. All right. Because when it talks about, when it speaks in the scriptures about uh, Pharisees and the elders that came to Yahweh Shai asking him, why does he allow his disciples to eat with people that's not washing hands? And it's, in, it's, in the, it's part of our customs. Well, Yahweh Shai rebuked them because that was part of our custom, but that's not going to lead you to salvation. You know, he said, don't be righteous over much, et cetera, et cetera. But, so, what Paul was talking about was, let's get into it, man. He wasn't saying, um, you know, that would be fair, saying, hey, man, this was our custom before, but now, even even with the Passover, you would have to be washed and nitrate, be cleansed and all that, be able to take, and be circumcised to take part in the Passover. But now, you don't have to do that. You know, you, we're clean through the washing of the word and the circumcision is of the heart. So that's our customs changing. You get what I'm saying? But to now, f for our people to do this, let's get this. All right, this is what Paul was saying. Proverbs 3 and 31. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Paul was basically reiterating the same thing. This guy just missed it. So let's deal with the scripture that he went off on. All right, so choose none of the oppressor's ways. Who was our oppressor during the Roman Empire? Yahweh was, Shai was telling them people the mystery of iniquity is already at work, man. Esau. But it's going to be re revealed in these last days. It's Esau that was pushing that long hair, don't care attitude. And our people picked up on that custom under the Greeks, 168 BC. All right, with uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. I may get that one. Once this dude brings up the last of demonians, which may have to be another lesson, uh, this would be like an introduction to it. Uh, that's when I'll go into those topics with the last of demonians, which were basically the 300 
from the uh, the movie 300 and they were they were of the tribe of Judah but that don't mean they were righteous <laughs> this dude man anyway that's he gonna bring up the last demonia later so let's deal with uh first Corinthians all right so first Corinthians 11 and one and this is Paul's letter to Corinth his sec I think his first trip and then he had a second trip to Corinth um or message and this was around 52 AD all right so first Corinthians 11 and 11 <clears throat> says nevertheless neither is the man um, without the woman neither the woman without the man now let's get to the point verse 13 judge in yourselves man so you got to be able to judge this within yourself and if the spirit is dealing with you you'll be able to understand and judge the situation is it calmly so this is a question and he didn't read it this way this is a question from Paul is it calmly that a woman pray unto Yahweh uncovered and he's gonna answer that question at the end of the statement this guy didn't read it that way All right, he focused on the word customs like we didn't have the customs it was a custom it's not a, he never said it was a law well custom goes into ordinances traditions even at some points the laws which created our customs as well all right which is very important the ordinances and the laws and ordinances the laws of commandments all these things go hand in hand all right so he's saying judge this within yourself is it calmly is it beautiful or good for that a woman pray unto Yahweh uncovered I would ask him that question right because um let's keep going do if not so he ba Paul basically iter uh, hinting that yo this is a bad thing for a woman to pray to the most high with her head uncovered that's like her being bald headed all right the Lord even blessed a woman with a natural covering which is like long hair that can cover all the way down to the damn feet and that's her glory shows the separation between a male and a female but they were just as creations so he gave her a natural veil a woman even in nature now that's the point it says here is it not is it calmly that a woman pray unto Yahweh uncovered no do if not even nature itself teach you so you know Paul was being sarcastic right here he said don't even nature itself teach you meaning the law of nature what's that they ain't talking about the damn animal kingdom if a man have long hair it is a shame unto him so what nature is he talking about he's talking about our laws that's nature that's nature that gets us in line and in tune just like the birds are in their in their habitat in their order keeping the laws puts humanity in order that's nature so the law of nature this dude man he said it's not in the law it's not in the law this is it was a custom dude you just want to keep your hair man if you look at all the Israelite I was watching something earlier with the Syrians I watched a video a documentary on the Syrian Empire and what they did to us you know I'm gonna pull that up real quick and then I'm gonna get the scripture this is the picture of the Jews, the Israelites in ancient Assyria, the Assyrian Empire, being persecuted. Now look at their hair, short afros. But then you had some pictures where they had uh, braids. They didn't have dreadlocks. All right, so I'm not going to show too many pictures, man, because you'd be hunting for days. But you see our hairstyles, man. Let me zoom in. All right. But sometimes they would wear, you see this. This, even though this is a Syrian on the left, they would wear it to their shoulders. All right, and a lot of Jakes would have braids too, like Samson. Um, but a lot of Jakes would have braids, but they would wear it down to their shoulders. All right, in war, you don't want to have long hair anyway. So now, all right, so this is where he went off at, where he said, um, "It's a custom, not a law." Well. Paul was trying to tell the people of Corinth, asking them that question, saying, "Yo, <laughs> look, doesn't the, doesn't nature itself teach you? 
look, man, it's showing you right here. Growth, nature. Um, where is it at? Right here. Constitution. Mm, the nature of things. The force. The laws. Order of nature. All right. So what is it talking about? What What was he talking about? Uh, Paul was talking about. Look, I'm going to get it. I'm going to show you. It's in the laws, man. It's not just a custom. It was part of the laws. And Paul knew this. And he was saying, look, man, don't the laws even teach you this? Hey, is it calmly for a woman to, to prophesy with her head uncovered? Then she would be like a man. Look, let's go to the law. Deuteronomy 22 and 5 in the commandments, right? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What, what pertaineth unto a man? A lot of people say jeans and all that shit. Back then, it was um, priestly outfits because they would look like a priest or warrior. And a woman was made for the home at that time. All right? So a man wasn't supposed to be wearing tight clothing, you know, like to see their body. Or um, having their head fully covered when they're prophesying, you know, or out there teaching. And a woman was not supposed to be bald headed unless it was dealing with shame. When we would take a nation and you would take a woman, a uh, concubine or something, they would shave her head and put her in shame. All right, for, for a little bit. And when her hair grows back, that's when the man can get with her. So for a woman to not have hair is, is sad and shameful. Look at today. That's why they're wearing so much um, weave, right? Cause they want to fit in. So and um, so look, man. Let's read. Let's read the nature that Paul was referring to, Deuteronomy twenty-two and five. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So he, the woman wasn't supposed to wear priestly garments to teach, or to go into the altar, or um, the high priest. Or the priestly outfits, you know, um, which was made for men at that time. And also, she wasn't supposed to bald her head, not bald her head, but cut her hair um, super low like G.I. Jane and shit. It says, um, neither a, shall a man put on a woman's garment more fitted, uh, you know, the, uh, the head wraps that they wear being draped, you know, as they do today, wearing purses, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, also long hair. <laughs> that pertains to a woman, you know? So he, that's This is what Paul was talking about. He said, doesn't law, doesn't nature itself, the law teach you? So this dude is cut, man. He's saying it's not uh, part of the law. Because he said, uh, we have so not, no such custom. Let's check it out. All right, so when it speaks about nature, it's talking about the laws. So let's get back into it. It says here, um, see, these dudes be so proud, man. They don't even know they're missing the mark. 1 Corinthians 11 and 14. Do if not the law itself teach you? That's what he's trying to say right there. That if a man, see, he's not talking about animals and shit. It's talking about a man and a woman. So he said nature, so he probably threw him all. He's talking. He probably thought about lions and shit, and tigers and bears. But when he said nature, it's talking about the law that was given to us, Deuteronomy. All right, in Leviticus, Deuteronomy's duo, which is the second time Moses gave the law. All right, before we entered the land. Do if not even nature or the law itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him, man. So you're not supposed to wear that that which pertaineth unto a woman. This is what Paul was saying to the brothers in Corinth. But he was using it as an example. Watch this. Remember, don't forget the question he asked. He says, judging yourselves, is it calmly that a woman praying unto Yahweh, un is it calmly for a woman to pray unto the Most High with her head uncovered? He asked that question. But if a woman have long hair, 
um, Salaki. Does not even the law itself or nature itself teach you that a man, if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, man. All right? So in the, in the ancient time, that would be shameful. But what? Something changed. It says here, it is a glory to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. So even naturally, if a man wasn't to get his hair dreaded or braided or whatever they call it, um, his hair would grow out like a fro. Unless you're Esau, born in shame, they should grow like a goat. But a woman's hair naturally grows and begins to fall, you know. So it says what? And some women just had them big ass afros too. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, man. For if her hair is given her for a cup, for her hair is given her for her covering, even naturally, a woman's gonna have long hair to cover her whole body. All right. So now, verse sixteen. But if a man, but if any man seem to be contentious, basically saying, if you're gonna go up against this. What Paul was saying, or against that point, or against the our customs or laws, if you're going to go against that, we have no such custom. Paul was like, yo, look, if any of y'all are against it, see, he read it different. But this is how you read it. Paul was saying, right, man. So if, if a man wear that was pertaining to a woman, it's a shame. I mean, that long hair. If a woman wears that pertaining to a man, I mean, put to a woman, it's a glory to her the long hair but if anybody is against this point just know that we have no such customs man that's not about that's not of us that's of the Greeks to wear that long hair that's what he was saying to them in Corinth neither the churches of Yahweh see even the people that are separated from the scribes and the Pharisees and the circumcision they were called the spiritual circumcision the churches of Yahweh which are the seven churches of Asia Minor so they would say, yeah, not even them. The ones in the truth and the ones that uh, that are part of the circumcision, you know. None of us believe in having long hair past the shoulders and shit. Being flamboyant. All right. So um, let me get something real quick. All right. <clears throat> so I want to go into the whole last of the morning topic, but I don't want this video to be long. I'm going to make it short and sweet. I'm going to go back, double back, get how it out later, and play his clip again with the part about the 300 of Lacedaemonians and dissect that as well. And I'm going to have to read this scripture again when that topic comes up. So this is 1 Maccabees 1 and 14. No, let's go uh, up here. All right, verse 10. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus Epiphanes, Antiochus surnamed Epiphanes. All right, and this was a, a E, and uh, this was around one. We're well, really like one seventy-five, but uh, and one seven to one seventy, Antiochus Epiphanes started ruling. But then he came up against us around one sixty-nine, and then he came at us again on his second trip to Egypt in one sixty-eight B.C. And he pushed to Hellenize our people. To Hellenize means to what? Turn them into following the ways of the pagans pagan customs greek customs all right and a lot of our people a lot of the men followed after that in fear and in um wickedness it says son of son of the son of antiochus the king who had been a hostage at rome right because his father would um went to war uh, what was that called, man? The wars, man. Was it Hannibal? I think Hannibal and all them. Phoenician war. No, the Phoenician wars. All right. I think it was four of them. And this, his father, Antiochus Epiphanes' father, was fighting in those wars. And every time you would fight a war as a general, you had to pay a tax to the Roman Empire. And to pay that tax off, you could also do it with. Um, time served you know like in jail or prison well 
this guy, uh, I forgot his dad's name, Antiochus the third. Anyway, so his dad was put in the prison to pay off his debt. But when his dad died off, uh, Antiochus Epiphanes went there in, in, in the stead of his dad, all right, to pay off that debt. So while he was there, I got I think it was Seleucid, right? Seleucid the fourth or two, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm correct. Uh, he removed Domitian from that prison. I mean, he, so like he removed Antiochus Epiphanes from the prison of the Romans to pay off that debt, and he replaced him with his nephew or something like that, named Domitian. Right, to pay off that debt and he set up Antiochus Epiphanes to rule and to come against uh, Egypt all right and to, and to push their conquest into further land so they chose Antiochus but Antiochus was extremely wicked he was an oppressor all right but the other kings before that they never really pushed for us to go against Yahweh Antiochus Epiphanes, he showed up and called himself Epiphanes, which means like God like or something like that. So anyway, he pushed the Hellenization on us, right? Paganism. It says, Who had been a hostage at Rome, see, this Antiochus Epiphanes, and he re he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks, man. So that would take you to like one seventy five or one seventy. Alright. In those days, um, in those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many that's like this dude trying to persuade many to get long hair and don't care saying let us go and make a covenant with the heathen man so they made a covenant with paganism that are round about us with the Greeks for since we departed from them we have had much sorrow right and in the Greek Empire it was known to be um, a status symbol like uh, amongst the Egyptians you would have to bald your head your eyebrows and face and you would look at as rich if you have hair and stubble they looked at you as poor or degenerate in the Egyptian Empire but what did Pharaoh find out by the time Mosai judged him Pharaoh told uh, I think his name was Tut, Tut Mose the third he uh he told Moses, my Shah, he said, I and my people are wicked. <laughs> Y'all are righteous. <laughs> so the Greeks found out the same thing. Their customs are growing long hair, following after Alexander. Because this was Antiochus Epiphanes was after Alexander. All right. And Alexander died around like um uh three thirty BC. All right. A, a, a little later like 315 or so alright but anyway so Alexander had long hair that was his thing he wore long hair and he had a, a, a bald face and he kept it like that and he wore a little uh, damn bandana alright like you used, used to see them aerobic instructors do <laughs> his name Richie or something Richard but uh, anyway, uh, Little Richard used to wear one too, the headband, the thin ones. But, uh, so now, let me get this one real quick. This is a picture from the Greek Empire showing all their different hairstyles. All right, so a lot of them wore short hair until up to Alexander the Crete. They started following after the ways of Alexander. All right, so now it says here, of course, kids and young men often wouldn't wear beards, right? This in the Greeks, amongst the Greeks, because they didn't have the capability to wear beards, right? Some people that just couldn't grow a beard, you didn't grow a beard, you know what I mean? You just couldn't naturally grow one. However, the head Greek trendsetter, <laughs> the trendsetter, shady, the Greek trendsetter, trendsetter, Alexander the, the Crete, did not wear a beard. So he he didn't do it on he he didn't wear his beard on purpose. 
So in the Hellenistic period, Hellenistic period that we're speaking about during the time of um, Antiochus Epiphanes, 168 BC, the Hellenistic period, all the way up until the time of Paul, 52 AD. In the Hellenistic period, any men, uh, many men, began to go with the clean shaven look following after Alexander, man. Look at that. See, that's why Paul was telling them, like, yo, look, w if you want to be contentious against this point, against the law, the custom, or the nature, spoken of in Deuteronomy, I think, 22, he's saying, look, w if you're against it, look, we don't have no customs like that. Not even amongst the brother that's uh, called out, you know, the truth, that's called out into the truth. W we don't We don't wear that. So what you wearing it for? It says here, Ancient Greek hairstyles. Hairstyles in ancient Greece also changed over time. In the early days of Greece, men normally wore their hair what? Short and they grew their beards, man. In the early days of Greece. But then once the Hellenistic period to Hellenize. Let's get that. This is Hellenization. All right. This is the Hellenistic period. Hellenization or Hellenism. Because you had three factions of groups at that time, uh, prominent groups. You had the Hasidim, you had the uh, Hasmoneans, which uh, comes from the guy Hasmon, which his descendants was uh, Judah Hasmon, the Hasmonean dynasty, but Judah's name was changed to uh, Maccabee, which means hammer. That was a nickname. Um, and then you had the Hellenists. Right, the natural Hellenists and the and you had the Hellenista, right? Well, that shit don't play on words. But the Hellenization or Hellenism is the process by which non Greeks, which were Israelites like us, like Paul was saying, they adopted Greek culture. And with that you're gonna get the trends as well. They followed after the trend of Alexander. All right, Greek culture, language religion and identity see that they start calling themselves Greeks they started taking on the customs of the Greeks wearing their hair long and shit probably getting perms like they did here in America <laughs> all right just like you see Jake trying to fit in with Esau here getting blonde hair um or in the 70s and 80s they put that conk in their hair that's what they used to call it conk and put that damn perm in there and you see like, ah, smacking their damn head it says it can refer to the influence of Greek culture on the peoples that the Greek and Roman empires conquered or interacted with so Hellenization means to be forced or influence another nation to become pagans or Greeks alright so it says here in the early days of Greece men normally wore their hair short and grew beards all right so this was before the Lacedaemonians all right up until the Lacedaemonians they were following after the raid you know the, the 300 they were following after the, they were Greeks they were fighting for the Greek army they were Spartans I'm gonna do another lesson on that so I don't so nobody missed the point so all we have to end the shit and put it in the beginning but uh yeah and they were um them letter boys you know the rain you know they messed the rainbow up but you get the point it's a lot about them last last of demonias man they were off they weren't a righteous nation so i'm gonna go into that later man uh in the early days of greece men normally wore their hair short and they grew the beards buddy but during the hellenistic era beards went out of style why because they picked up the customs the trends of alexander that's what they would call what the successors the diadoshi all right uh who is that lysi myacus um the ptolemy seleucid uh, was it cassander all right the, the, the four diadoshi and from Seleucid, you get Antiochus Epiphanes. 
So during the Hellenistic era, beards went out of style. And who who was serious about them beards? Our people. If you had hair, they would grow it to their shoulders. That's about it. Long hair was typic was typical for Greek women. So we not. Pfft. It's typical customs. What did Paul say? We have no such customs for the men to wear that that pertain to a woman. You know what I mean? So he said, if anybody, Paul was answering his own question, saying, uh, let me get it. All right, so Paul was teaching them of our ordinances and traditions, which goes into the, uh, the nature, which goes into the laws as well. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 3, but I would have you know that the head of the man, head of every man is Yahweh Shai. And the head of the woman is the man or her man, you know. And the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. So he's making a point. So every man that prays, prays or prophesying, meaning if you're not praying or prophesying, you can wear a hat. You got IUIC, you walk up them and try to walk up to them and try to listen, and you're not praying or prophesying, but you're just listening. They say, take off your hat. You see what I'm saying? You know, so they, they, this is, um, let's get that. This is for Romans 1, no, next time we go to 10. Romans 10 and 3, no, 10 and 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to the knowledge, man. For they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness, that's what Paul was saying to them, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. It's not even about customs or laws or this and that. It's about is it righteous or not. If it's part of our customs, it was righteous. If it's part of our laws, it was righteous. If it's part of our ordinances, it was righteous. So instead, they go about to establish their own righteousness. All right. For Yahweh Shai, oh, so now let's keep going to get to the point. Because there was also another issue that was amongst the Corinthians as well. You had women that was in the congregation of men blurting out, yelling out shit. And he was, and Paul was saying, yo, look at you, letting your women yell or take over y'all in these congregations. You might as well let them have their head bald too, like a man. Which was shameful. That's why he was saying that. All right, so every man, let's get this. First Corinthians 11 and 4. Every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonor of his head so if you have um your head covered when you're teaching like sakari with baseball caps you're dishonoring the most high because he wants you to have it uncovered just like you were walking into the altar or the holy of holies you wouldn't have a damn baseball cap on your head you would have the top of your head uncovered that's why we wore mitris so the top of your head could be uncovered see these americanized jakes taking on the customs of the greeks Right, you can wear a baseball cap, but you wouldn't wear it when you're out there teaching. Or, and when we teach, we're basically setting up an altar. All right, dealing with the Most High in the Spirit. You wouldn't wear that damn hat in His presence, but you could wear a Mitri in His presence. All right. And so it says, uh, "The sign of His head." But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonor of her head dishonor of her man all right so if a woman out there yelling and hooting and hollering, yeah woo, like they be doing out here or uh, uh politics especially man and, and you see a lot of the women out there yelling on the microphone and all that that's a dishonor to her man at home all right so if we out there teaching like zabak and them they'll bring women out there from what i remember all right, so some brothers would be on the internet teaching with their woman, like on screen. You know, it's a, it's a, the scriptures clearly say uh, in Timothy that he suffered not a woman to teach, meaning he allowed not a woman to teach. So that's what Paul was saying. He was comparing it to a woman having her head uncovered. All right. And he was saying it's a shame. So for if a woman be not covered 
let her also be shorn. Uh, so like but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. So can a woman prophesy? Yeah, she'll be taught by a man. And you can tell it to other women and all that. But you're not supposed to teach in the congregation of men. All right. They were meeting out in the streets and it was women in the, in the midst and yelling out and all that. So he was saying, yo, look, if you're going to be out here yelling and, and you're out here teaching and you got your head uncovered, you dishonoring your husband at home. So if you're going to do that, you might as well go all the way with it. Become a full man. Check this out, which is a shame. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonor of her head or her man. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. So it's just as bad as her being bald headed. All right, a woman out there teaching and being amongst the congregation or praying with her head uncovered. Right. Um, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. He's like, if you don't want to cover your head, if, so if, for example, if a woman doesn't want to cover her head, she might as well just go ahead and go bald. It looked like a man the whole way. <laughs> that was Paul was he was Paul was getting them, man. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven. Let her be covered then. Like if you're gonna, all right then. So if you gonna, if, if you got a wife that don't want to cover her head, you might well say, all right. Well, the Lord gave you a natural covering, which is your hair, your long hair. If you don't want a covering, you might well shave that off too, <laughs> which would be a shame. And this society is not a shame. For a man, indeed. Ought not to cover his head. See, that's why we have our head uncovered when we teach. For as much as he is the image and glory of Yahweh, but the woman is the glory of the man. All right. So, when you're in the Father's presence, Yahweh Shai's presence, you put the heavy head uncovered. Represent Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. If you was going to the the altar, you know, you would have your head uncovered, man. You know, you. And, and uh, what's the name? And a woman being in your presence, you supposed to represent Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So she should have the same respect in covering her head when she's out in public or uh, cover and covering her body. All right. Diamonds are, are precious because they're hidden. You know, and uh, cover her, her head. Right. It says what? For the man is not the one of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. See? There should be a level of respect there. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels, meaning the angels are watching. And they the angels know the laws, like <laughs> they're gonna be watching, you know? Yahweh Shah is one of those angels. So they need to have, cover their head in respect of the, the holy angels. All right. Because uh, they're watching. So now let's keep going. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Meaning we're a team. That's why he said he made a sidekick, a rib, representing your side. All right. Not behind you, not in front of you, not over you, but on your side. All right. That's your sidekick. Um, for as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But but all things of Yahweh, right? Even though the woman came from man, we still come from the woman as well through the womb. So it should be, you know, the respect that we're all just humans. But it's still order. It says, judge in yourselves, man. You should be able to judge these small things. Judge this within yourself and judge right judgment. Is it calm? He's like, yo, look, think about it. That's what you're saying. Is it beautiful that a woman pray unto Yahweh uncovered? That's what he was asking. He said, do if not even nature itself or the law itself teach you or the nature of a woman that's born with hair, that if a woman have long hair, it is a, 
I mean, if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Where where were we taught that? In Deuteronomy 22. A man shall not wear that which pertaineth to a woman, and a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. That's the nature. That's the law. Do if not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. All right, so it is part of the law. But if a woman have long hair, right, it is a glory to her. The longer the hair, the, the more extravagant the woman usually is. For her hair is given her for a covering, man, naturally. But if any of y'all want to be some a-holes and you want to be contentious, that's what he's saying. But if any man seem to be contentious, like this guy, uh, I don't know his name, so I ain't going to say his name, the, the one that put the video up. All right. But if any man seem to be contentious against this point, against it, we have no such custom. See, Paul was answering his own question. So now let's read it without the extra. It says here, judge in yourselves. Is it calmly that a woman pray unto Yahweh uncovered? He basically went straight to it. He said, what? If you, if any of y'all are against this point, we have no such customs, neither the churches of Yahweh. So he was answering it. He's like, no, it's not beautiful for a woman to have, have her head uncovered. He was answering his own question, but he made a few points first. But if any of y'all don't want to listen, just know that we don't have that custom to where a woman have her head uncovered, walking around doing what she wants. All right. So um, let me get this real. All right, and this is this is what uh, Matthias, who was the uh, father of Judas and his brethren, that took down at Antiochus Epiphanes through the spirit and power of Yahweh was shy, and he started rebelling against the Greeks uh, in 167 BC. All right, and that's when you get Hanukkah in 164, you know. So, the rededication of the temple. So, it says here, 1 Maccabees 2 and 19, Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice. So, this was a Judite, an Israelite. And he yelled it out. He roared. Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him. So all y'all want to have long hair and don't care. You want to become uncircumcised. Right? And following after Esau or Antiochus Epiphanes at that time. And fall away everyone from the religion of their fathers. All right? And religion deals with restraint. You know, and customs. And give consent to his, his commandments so if you start following out the commandments of Esau and their trends having that long hair and eating pork like Peter Porker all oh, you damn y'all a bunch of Greeks man it says yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our forefathers that's what Paul was saying too he said yo look I don't we don't deal with that. We don't have them type of customs. That's just it. Yahweh forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. Ordinances goes into traditions, the customs, the commandments, not just the law itself. So you don't want you don't want to forsake any of the Lord's righteousness. All right, and and washing of hands that's a just dirt. That's what the most. That's what Yahweh was saying. That's just dirt. It goes in the body, and it passes through. You know. So that was like you know. But to pick up the customs of the Greeks, that's something different. That can't be. That can't be in the same basket as washing hands or not. All right, washing hands came from our people. Long hair came from the Greeks. All right, Yahweh forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. We will not hearken to the king's words to go from our religion either on the right hand or on the left hand. 
It's either carnally or spiritually. We ain't budging. So we don't want your long hair. I'll take an afro. But we ain't want your damn long ass hair. Now if somebody in the pool and they damn hair is fall, it's going to poof back out. If you get it braided, you get it braided to your shoulders. But it's not supposed to be dreaded anyway. It's dreadful. That's another custom that's not ours. And the Greeks wore that too. With the Lacedaemonians. We don't want it to pork. We don't want to bald our faces. You, you know, that's just it. Right, so, yeah, man. During the Hellenistic era, beards went out of style. Long hair was a typical, was typical for Greek women. Only slave women would wear their hair short. All right, so, um, there you go. That's right, the beards went out of style. You know, and they started wearing long hair. I don't want to follow after the trend set is shady. Of course, kids and young women, I mean young men, often wouldn't wear beards cause it, because they didn't have the capability to wear beards, certain of them. However, the head Greek trendsetter, Alexander the Creep, did not wear a beard, man. He had the he had the means to grow a beard, but he just didn't want to. So in the Hellenistic period, many men began to go with the clean shaven look. Right, trying to be like their mama instead of their daddy, like Michael Jackson. All right, so it says here men hairstyles <laughs> and hats. Later, Alexander the Creep set a new trend for hair. He kept his hair a little longer than usual. Look at it, man. Look at that shit. Right? He kept his hair a little longer than usual, man. And like that picture of Cesare Bozier. And he wore a diadema, another type of headband. He had that tiny ass, I told you, like that aerob aerobic headband. <laughs> uh, like in, in, in the 80s. Men began to follow his example. Many of the male trends in hairstyles seem to mirror the female trends. Read that again. <clears throat> Many of the male trends in hairstyles seem to mirror female trends just like in Corinth what was Paul saying we don't have that type of custom <laughs> but one are definitely uh, one definitely doesn't that area would be the beards alright so yeah the hair and beards of men of ancient Greece so they would wear their beards long like goats too. All right, so there's tons of videos on social media of Africans, all right, which are Israelites, using their hands, digging into fufu and dipping it in the salt, just like the uh, wicked scribes and Pharisees was getting on certain Israelites for not washing their hands. But if any man, First Corinthians eleven. And 14 says, death not even nature is. Where was Corinth? A municipality in Greece. Who did Paul write to and say this? He said it to the Corinthians. All right. You can see it right there. It's, it's connected with idolatry. But let me just, let me just go to the, um, real quick, like, and just read it. Because I do want to bring out scripture. Man, First fact, Corinthians, see something real quick, cause he he said something else about the braids, and you know. There you go. So, he said, "Yeah, you can see it right on the screen." Let's see what he got on the screen. It says, "In ancient Greece, long hair and many long hair had many meanings, including ornament for men. So we know the Greeks were following after pagans, paganism, and following after their daddy Alexander. So this is like null and void, bro. Yeah, the Greeks did that. Yeah." But our people, our people were, were not supposed to follow that shit. That's what Paul was saying. He was clearly not in agreement with it. 
however you want to look at it, laws, customs, or not, but it was actually in the law spoken of by Moses that a man should not wear that pertaining to a woman, and a man should not a woman should not wear that pertaining to a man, even dealing with the hair. All right, and I just read to you that amongst the Greeks they would mirror the customs of the women, just like in America. Long hair was considered an ornament for men. The Greeks, man, Spartans, I told you. Just like in Egypt, they would say a bald head was an ornament for men. and was only cut as a sign of mourning. Symbol of, wit, of wealth and power, see? The Greeks would say bald your hair, bald your face, bald your legs, bald everything, your knuckles and shit. And then they're like, look at that rich dude. Long hair... <laughs> Rico Suave ass dude man I got long hair myself But I'm not biased Long hair for men Was a symbol of wealth and power While a shaven head Was appropriate for slaves man So they, see that They look at it as bad man the cut Our customs I ain't having short hair At least to your shoulders Boys would cut their long hair when they became of age and dedicated to Apollo, the god of eternal youth. Bro, why would you even have this on the screen, man? He cutting itself. So you want to have that long hair so you can dedicate it to your idols, Apollo? The hell, man. That's what they had it for. They dedicate, just like um, those Elamites over there. They cut their hair and they dedicate it to their idols. And then they send it over here and they sell it in the store for weave. <sighs> Man. All right. Source of life. The Greeks believed this was all paganism. They believed hair was a source of life and would sacrifice hair for the dead. This dude actually got this up here on the screen, man. Associated with strength and purity, hair was associated with strength and purity similar to the bible in ancient germanic tribe the bible <clears throat> he trying to say samson <laughs> samson was a nazarite that was something different all right so um anyway hair rituals young men and women would dedicate their um, their locks this dude, man, he's hilarious. This this isn't coming from a place of, oh, I want to keep a certain hairstyle, so let me make up a doctrine or something. You just did, boy. You know? Fuck okay. out 